User failures of the Kenyan justice system and police allowed Paul Nathanj Mackenzie to preach extreme fasting, despite several alerts about this self-proclaimed pastor today accused of the deaths of at least 428 people. Pastor Mackenzie has been in detention since April 14th, the day after the discovery of the first victims in the Shakahola Forest, where followers of his International Church of Good News gathered, to whom he preached to fast until death for Meet Jesus before the end of the world in August 2023. Since then, 428 bodies have been dug up in this bush area of southeastern Kenya, where research is still underway. One of the co-defendants also died in custody. Called underscore Shakahola Massacre, underscore this scandal caused astonishment in Kenya, a predominantly Christian country with 4,000 official churches. Kenya has experienced deaths linked to religious extremism in the past, but the Shakahola tragedy accounts for the highest number of deaths, recalls a senatorial commission of inquiry, stressing that this toll exceeds the worst jihadist attacks on its soil. The commission tasked with investigating the Shakahola massacre also implicates the local police, who had been receiving recurrent complaints from religious leaders and the community regarding Paul and Thenj Mackenzie's activities since 2017. These grievances highlighted the pastor's opposition to established educational and medical systems, along with allegations of adult radicalization, coercion into resigning from employment to join the church, and accusations of holding people hostage. The Killify County Security Committee, despite receiving similar complaints, was found inactive. It had summoned Mackenzie, warning him about his radical teachings and the reported inhumane conditions imposed on his followers. Recognizing the inadequacies of existing legislation, the committee urges Parliament to pass the Religious Organizations Bill 2023, aiming to establish a legislative framework for the regulation of religious organizations. In a separate legal development, Mackenzie was found guilty on November 10th for two counts related to the illegal exhibition of films on Times Television without the approval of the Kenya Film Classification Board. Charges included operating a film studio and producing films without a valid filming license from the board. The ongoing search for bodies and investigations in Shakahola underscore the urgent need for comprehensive legal measures to address the disturbing activities of religious leaders like Mackenzie. Born in 1976, a taxi driver before proclaiming himself a pastor, Paul Nenthange Mackenzie was faced with justice in 2017 for his extreme preaching. But the criminal justice system failed to prevent Paul Mackenzie's atrocious activities at Shakahola, the commission says, citing four cases in 2017 and 2019. In 2017, he was notably acquitted of charges of radicalization, while he illegally provided school education. He rejected the traditional educational system, which he said was not in conformity with the Bible. In 2019, he was accused of being linked to the deaths of two children who died of hunger and suffocation and were buried in the Shakahola forest. He was released on bail pending trial. In recent times, we've witnessed a disturbing trend where certain individuals exploit the sanctity of churches and religious faith to manipulate vulnerable minds. A glaring example of this manipulation is the Shakaola Massacre, where Pastor Paul Mackenzie shamefully convinced followers to starve themselves in the misguided pursuit of heavenly salvation. It is disheartening to see religious institutions, meant to foster community, love, and compassion, being used as tools of coercion and control. Such actions not only betray the fundamental principles of spirituality, but also pose a grave threat to the well-being of believers. We must remain vigilant against those who seek to exploit faith for their own gain, condemning any act that undermines the true essence of religion, compassion, understanding, and the pursuit of a better world for all. Let us collectively stand against the abuse of religious influence and work towards restoring the integrity of places of worship.